Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm automatically erratic, you radical, ratify my strategy when I'm attacking the capital. Funny rappers are laughing, but you ain't violent, you vaginal. I'm the mass mastermind, I'm mass murder, you max and gill. I surpass past my prime, I'm international. I fly casual, turn the fist, with the sick to real magical. Heavy blast, machete slash, esoteric serve rappers like Steffi Graff. You better dumb kids, Rosie O'Donnell, then face me as your arch rival like BK to McDonald's. Follow, peace to my man illegal. I got an ill eagle that's illegal in the States. It's beat the capitates, Don Cheetah, War Machine, great. I hit the studio at 7.30, leave at 8. I walk down beats like this, I don't need a plate. German engineer is steering my own fate. I paint vividly, visions of quaint misery that make history like the bullet that slay Kennedy. Take viciously, rape, pillage, and make enemies. Create imagery, for second we make energy. Paint vividly, visions of quaint misery that make history like the bullet that slay Kennedy. Take viciously, rape, pillage, and make enemies. The second we make energy Ladies and gentlemen, you will never witness a Rhyme minister whose rap style is so sinister Kinda like a surgeon's incision when I get into ya Tryna injure ya, fuck that, tryna get rid of ya I'm inhospitable, put you in the hospital When I spit a few hot riddles tryna kill you though Give you a lyrical attack, spit it like a Mac 11 Send you to heaven with seven in your back Combat shooting, to me, and off of my experience And my evolutions of combat and, and shooting and direct action operations. I, I'll tell you, combat shooting to me is your individual proficiency on your weapon combined with your understanding of strategy and tactics on how to maximize angles and coordinate the fields of fire against your enemy. Understand this. How to read the terrain and maximize cover, concealment, darkness, speed, all right? That's to me. But in order to do that, you have to master what? The fundamentals, right? Each individual on a special forces team, any type of, I don't know, any type of team, right? You have an individual skill, and then you have a team skill, right? Team tactic. So right now, today, is about developing the individual, right? It's about developing yourself. So in order to do that, you have to go back to the roots of things, the basics, okay? Because what I was taught prior to war was the seven fundamentals of pistol marksmanship. So I learned the seven fundamentals. I mean, I can, I, at one time, I was going to counter-terrorist training. I was 21, and I was like, Man, I could recite this thing over and over and over, and I knew it, in and out, in and out, right? But during the process of my life, I had to go back and revisit a lot of those fundamentals because what I was taught during peacetime wasn't working out for me when it came to speed and proficiency and moving and all that, right? So I had to revisit certain things. Grip was one. Stance was another one, right? Because while I was taught on a flat range, Right before the war, we were just taught on a flat range. They blow the whistle, draw, boom. Safety your gun, go back, draw the gun. They pull the whistle, boom. Right. So all you're doing is just standing there, stagnant. And yeah, we are employing tactics and strategy. Obviously, you got commandos. You got to do that. But our weapon handling skills wasn't there for our, our proficiency and movement and our tactics. You understand this? So during the process of the war, I'm like, man. I could be better with my shots. I could be better at the grouping drill. This, and this is, this is my experience, okay? Is I want to be able to drive from my 12 o'clock, my three o'clock, and my nine o'clock. Understand, I want to be able to cover this whole angle from here. I want to be able to draw my gun and shoot accurately in this kill zone. And with one movement on spin, I want to be able to cover this kill zone. You understand? One movement, one movement. Okay, so your footwork has to be, for me, I like my power hand, which is, I'm right-handed, right? I like my power side, my, my, my gun hand, I want that foot to be pulled back on a line. So I'm going to draw a line on the ground, imaginary. And I'm going to put my toes on this side of the line on my gun hand. And I'm going to pull my, my legs shoulder width apart, and I want to put my heels on the other side of this line. You see? See it? All right, so I'm standing here and I'm talking to you. See? Normal. 
no strain, okay? And I'm gonna pull my gun, and this is my position. You see? That's it. I don't wanna start seeing all this, right? I don't wanna start seeing, or, right? It's natural, okay? It needs to be a natural position. So if you're going up there, and you're like, okay, too, I'm gonna relax, man, I'm gonna relax. And I'm like, shooter, load, make ready. <laughs> And everything start locking up, right? And then you're like, and I'm like, do you understand the drill? Yes, too, I understand the drill. Fire. And you come out and you're like, yeah. You see, it is the spirit that takes over. You will always convert back to your level of training, no matter what. So today is about understanding yourself. You need to get up there and consciously talk to your subconscious. Your subconscious mind is fucking freaked out. You must control that energy. So once you get up there, all right, toes, line, little make ready, little make ready, stand botch. And then you need to say to yourself, relax, relax the shoulders. I'm standing upright having a conversation, okay? And I'm just gonna relax my base. I'm telling you guys, if you don't relax today, what's gonna happen on a five round rapid is you'll start kicking back. Everything is tense. You need to relax everything and let, let the structure of your body handle recall, okay? That's my teachings today. You have to understand it. On your stance, your hips need to be open. Hips close, hips open. Why do I want my hips open? Hmm? Mobility. Also my gun line. My gun line, my instruments. My instruments of war, right? I want to be able to get to my lifeline. I want to be able to get to whatever I need to get to on my gun belt. So if I aggressively pinch down like this, see I have to turn my body to get to my, my instruments. Understand this, it's about proficiency. All right, so let's talk about grip. You know, it's the first time I was training on grip, right? I had an instructor tell me, just grip the fucking gun. So I went, okay, so I gripped the gun, and I think I was like this. He goes, shoot the fucking gun, I'm bam, bam, I missed everything, right? And then when I started going to more specialized training, it was, okay, grip the gun like this. All right, hey, change up your structure a little bit. So I started dissecting it a little bit more. What I'm trying to say to you is, when you understand the seven fundamentals, right, maybe you understand it at the 10% level. Right? And then maybe you have to revisit grip again, and then maybe you understand it at the 40% level. And then maybe you go to war and combat, and then you go, ah. Oh. Then you understand it at the 80% level. Understand? In time, you understand more of the fundamentals if you're willing to swallow the ego and go back and start at the basics again. But if you understand this, then Life is a process of learning. You are only ready to learn certain things at certain times after certain reps of doing it. And going, oh, I fucked up. This ain't working for me. And then you go back and then you relearn it again. Beaver tail right here. It goes up. You have your back plate. All right. So you want to line up the structure of your hands, right? So you look at this right here. You want to take the gun and put it in just like this. I'm going to teach you what proper grip feels like and then you have to mimic that on a draw, okay? But if you feel what it feels like and the pressure points on the gun, you can mimic on a draw. And if you can mimic on a draw, oh, you'll be fucking fast. You want to reduce recoil on the gun, reduce the flip time on the gun. Beautiful. Those are principles. How do we achieve that principle? How do we go there? Because you're telling me, okay, a, a, a grip, I need, I need to flip my gun back on target. I need to align that thing with, with structure to my target. I need control on that, on that muzzle flip. Well, how do we do it? See, because a, just a normal grip on a gun won't allow you that. Okay? So you have to put pressure points on the gun. The harmonics on the gun. As the thing fires, it's going to vibrate certain ways, right? The way that your wrist pulls, you're going to have to counterbalance that. Understand? So if I'm a right-handed shooter and I put a lot of pressure on this side of the gun, I'm going to have to counterbalance that pressure on this side of the gun. And I'm going to have to choke up on the gun 
in order to reduce the muzzle flip. And I'm going to have to line my structure and relax my shoulders in order for that recoil to enter my body so I can have control. You understand? So what I'm trying to say to you is not just grip. Grip is about putting pressure on the gun at the certain points on the gun. So let me explain. So if I can hold my gun on a C-clamp position like this, I would. But I can't because that thing functions back. What, what's that telling you? If I can hold my gun on the C-clamp position right here, right, then that will make me more accurate. What's that mean to you? I need to control the end of the gun. Okay, so how do I control the end of the gun? I need to get my thumb out there. Okay, so I need to get my thumb out there. You understand, I need to control the harmonics on the gun. So the pressure is gonna push this way, the pressure is gonna push this way, the pressure is gonna push this way, and it's gonna go pressure up. Let me explain. All right, so the gun lines up with the structure. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull my hands up underneath the beaver tail. I'm gonna extend these two fingers. My, I tape up my gun, I mean my hands, not because I was playing with a knife, because uh, these are really aggressive grips, all right? And um, it tears up my hands after a whole day of aggressively shooting it. All right, so these two fingers are my power fingers, right? And they're going to, so imagine the gun here, they're going to turn and push the energy this way, up this way, you see? The fingers are not going this way, the fingers are pushing these two fingers right here are going to pull up this way on the gun. This finger then milks, so it looks like this. Then this, this thumb milks up right here. I got fucking grip on this gun. I'm pulling the gun up and I'm pulling my thumb straight up. This allows what? Space right here. My, my hands right here with my wrist line, this is called structure on a, on a drive hand. With me turning my wrist right here, this is a broken wrist. You see? This is structure. This is a broken wrist. So on a broken wrist, the recoil is going to go to the point of weakness on your structure. So if I have a broken wrist, what happens? It's going to go to this weak point. But if I just turn my wrist straight, where's that recoil going to go? It's going to enter my shoulders. So if I relax my shoulders, where's that recoil going to go? It muffles through my body. It's a beautiful energy if you, if you really channelize it and you observe it. It's a beautiful thing, recoil entering your body and the energy dispersing through your body. It's beautiful. Okay? You need to feel it, though. Only way is you need to relax. If the tighter I tense, think about it, the tighter I tense up my shoulder and my arms, where's that recoil going? And if my shoulder's tight, where's that going? Towards my stance. You understand this? On a weak wrist, you'll start seeing if rounds are hitting you in the fucking head, like bunk, 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 where rounds are hitting, that's the gun telling you, you got a weak ass wrist, man. Right? So you need to change your structure on the gun, right? So the gun is not pumping shellings on your fucking head. Because think about it. If I have a weak wrist, the recoil is going to go here like this. The, the shell is going to pop me in the face. Pop me in the face, right? Okay. Yes, sir. So. Uh, so this top portion mm -hmm. is about how I turn it. That's the proper grip. Okay. Okay. okay thank so you. we're handshaking here. So this is the pistol. This is the top portion. That's about how tight I, I hold my grip. Yeah. Feel it? <laughs> so I, I basically turn my wrist. I'm teaching you pressure. See how you feel just the top? This is the whole grip on the gun. This is just the top of the gun. Only the top portion of the gun. If I squeeze this portion, it's going to start pulling my gun offline. Only the top portion of the gun. 
That's about the pressure I place on my gun. Only the top portion. You feel this, even this pressure right here, right? Yes, sir. So that pushes back the gun. If you have space right here, you have no control of the gun. You have to get high on the gun, high on the gun, understand? And then these two fingers are pretty much pulling this up at this angle. And then this thumb goes into a five o'clock position on this ramp. Notice how both of my trigger finger and my drive hand, they're basically the same. See it? And what's that allow me? Equal pressure on both sides. If I have one forward, it's going to start pulling the gun right. Think about it. Okay? Any questions on grip? Let me tell you something. You have proper grip, that gun is not moving. That gun, you could, that gun, it won't even, it, it, it's just a slide, it's just action back and you can just track the, the, the sights the whole time. Okay? If you have proper grip. Also, this needs to squeeze in right here like this. So as you're gripping, with the proper grip I, I told you, with the proper pressure, now what I'm doing is at the top, I'm pinching the top just like this. Understand? I'm pulling my elbows like this out to get that pinch. And that will give me more control over the gun, more, more management over this weapon. Okay? All right. It's it's really hard concept, right, to get at first, but once you get proper grip, I'm telling you, your whole gun fighting is going to change. Got the bone on the uh, on the uh, trigger finger, okay, and that will give you always a great reference point, okay. So I want you to grab your your trigger finger right now, and I want you to feel the bend on your trigger finger. Feel it. And you should feel a bone, right, towards the the tip of the finger. You should start feeling a bone and then you start feeling the meaty portion and then the tip, all right? So right here at the bend, you'll feel the bone. You'll feel where the meaty portion start on your trigger finger and then you feel the tip of the finger, okay? So what I usually do is I like to start off on the bend, okay? I like to start off on the bend because we call it tuning the gun to us, okay? So when I, when I tune the gun to me in my grip, in my eyesight and how my stance is at, right? Remember, everybody's different, okay? So first I tune the gun. So I go all the way towards the bend and usually for me, my rounds are right. My rounds are right. And then I go towards where the bone is at, the bone in that finger's at, and that will give me a straight clean press back because it's bone, okay? And usually it's still a little bit right for me. Depending on my gun, each gun is different. And then I go towards the, the middle of my trigger finger, the middle portion of it where the meaty portion is at. And usually for me, that's, that's center. Where I'm going with this is if you find your, if your grip is good and you're not anticipating recoil and your rounds are, are, are grouping right or grouping left, right, then you need to adjust your trigger finger. That means if your rounds are grouping right, you need to give me less trigger finger. You'll hear me say that today. Give me less trigger finger. Give me more trigger finger. All right? You need to listen to me when I'm coaching you. Okay? If you see your rounds drifting right, what am I going to do? Less trigger finger. Left? More trigger finger. Okay? So that's, do you think I do that on the fly? I do. Press is... When you draw the gun, you're gonna hit a wall, right? So you're gonna have no resistance, and you're gonna hit, oh, resistance. We call it in the shooting world, the wall, okay? I want to hit that wall. I want to hit that wall as fast as I can. So basically, I don't want to do this. Fire, boom, come back, re let the gun reset really slow, and then boom again, okay? I want to come off that trigger and reset that, say I'm at the wall. See, I'm at the wall. I'm taking out the slack, I'm at the wall, I'm gonna fire. Taking out the slack, I'm at the wall. So as soon as I fire, I'm going back to the wall. The faster you can go back to the wall, the faster you can fire. What I don't wanna do is squeeze through the wall where I'm not feeling that wall. What's that wall do for me? 
What's that wall do for me, sir? Okay, I like that. What's the wall do for me? What happens towards when I hit the wall? Everything gets refined at a very focused point now. Okay, so I'm like, oh, I'm at the wall. Now it's front sight. Sign line and side picture, front sight, breathing, boom, and it goes off. So once I hit that wall, everything gets refined on me to make it more accurate. Make sense? All right. Any questions on trigger pull? That's big today, guys. You can have the best fucking grip and your trigger pull sucks, you're not going to hit the target. Okay? Trigger pull is important. Do you think it's natural to anticipate on a trigger? Huh? Yeah, it is. This thing's blowing up in your hands, right? So that's why people dry fire. That's why people are always at the range. You will flinch. I still flinch. Okay, if I'm off the gun for a while, I flinch.